Hey there, it's Noah from Competitive Cyclist, and I am here with Alessandro Pataki and Angelo from Willier. We're going to ask them a couple of questions. All right, Alessandro, what, for next year, who do you think has the most potential to, you know, take stage victories, win the races, the big races, that maybe it's not mainstream yet, maybe something you know from being within the peloton? Um, that we wouldn't we wouldn't all think of right now. Hi, uh, I I am very happy to stay here in uh, in Las Vegas for for the faith and uh, with William and, uh, and niente. Or I speak Italian is, okay. is better. Okay. And, uh, non non vedo ad oggi un corridore italiano molto giovane eh, che possa andare bene nelle volate. Sicuramente gli stranieri come Cavendish, Farrar hanno dimostrato di avere delle grandi qualità vincendo anche parecchie gare e quindi ad oggi purtroppo in Italia non, non c'è ancora questo giovane promettente. Thank you. Angelo. Well, uh, what he said is essentially uh, is afraid that uh, there is no sprinting talents coming from Italy anytime soon. Uh, there is nothing that we have uh, coming up as fast as Cavendish or uh, Tyler Farrar. And uh, those, those two guys, they will pr probably be dominating the, uh, the scene, the sprinting scene for a long, long time. Okay. Thank you. There you have it. Sounds like Cavendish and Farrar. All right. Next up, what would you consider the hardest day you have ever had on a bike? There's more than one because... Solo un giorno è, è troppo poco, ho avuto parecchi giorni difficili, però sicuramente quello che mi ricordo meglio è quando nel Giro d'Italia 2006 la seconda tappa mi sono rotto la rotula sinistra e, e ho fatto più di 50 km con la gamba rotta e è stata una, una grande sofferenza, però il fatto che era la seconda tappa ho cercato di, di andare all'arrivo e poi capire realmente il problema che c'era. Un altro giorno difficile che ho avuto nella mia carriera è al Tour, nella tappa che arrivava all'Alpe d'Uez, dove non mi vergogno a dirlo, è dalla fatica, dalla, dalla stanchezza, forse anche stanchezza mentale, sono riuscito anche a piangere sull'Alpe d'Uez, però questo mi ha, sicuramente mi ha servito nella mia carriera e mi ha cresciuto per poi ritornare al Tour e, e, e vincere. Insomma. Okay. Angelo, you got all that? Oh yes, absolutely. He said that uh, one day is not enough to describe many rough days on the bike. But there are two of them, he likes to mention two, two of them uh, that he really vividly remembers. The first one was in the 2006 uh, Giro d'Italia, in the second stage, where he crashed out and uh, he later found out that he had broken his uh, kneecap. So he rode for 52 kilometers, you know, about 35 miles, with a broken kneecap, refusing, you know, in, uh, in total denial that uh, he had a broken kneecap, which he later was diagnosed later on. And the second roughest day that he had, that he can remember, it was in the 2001 uh, Tour de France, uh, during the Alpe d'Huez stage, where uh, on, at the end of the climb, he was in so much uh, psychological and physical pain that uh, he's not ashamed to say that he was actually crying. There you have it, actually crying. Okay, we'll, we'll put those days behind us. Um, and, sp and speaking of that, what do you see yourself doing once you hang up the bike, you hang up the cleats, and uh, you're not suffering on these days on the bike anymore? Yeah. I, I don't know. In this moment, I'm thinking solo a correre. I have two years of contract in front of me. I hope to do anche a third, che poi comincio a essere un po' vecchiotto per questo sport però dopo mi piacerebbe rimanere nell'ambiente o con Lampre o non so, con Villier, Gaern, con tutti gli sponsor diciamo, che in questo momento mi seguono e, oppure fare anche una squadra che so che è molto difficile però ho un amico come Michele Bartoli che tante volte se ne parla e spero di, di riuscirci insieme a lui, sarebbe bello Ok, thank you well, of course, he, uh, he hopes to, uh, to stay in the cycling world after he hangs up his, uh, his bike. And uh, he's definitely going to be racing for the next two years. You know, he's under contract with Lamprey for the next two years. And he hopes to extend for an additional year after that. 
football. After that, he thinks that he's getting a little bit too old for this. <laughs> All right. Uh, certain, uh, if you allow me, uh, oh, yes. what he would like to be in the future is either stay with Lampre in some sort of a you know, uh, capacity or to uh, work for the present sponsors like Villier or Gaerne, or uh, maybe an ambassador, um, ambassador for our brand. Right. And uh, maybe, and maybe uh, he knows that it's very difficult, maybe start a racing team uh, together with his good friend Michele Bartoli, that you guys remember from uh, all the classic that he won in the past, and start a new racing team and br bring up a new talent from Italy. Wow, a lot to look forward to there. Okay, and the, the last question we have, you know, we're here at Interbike in Las Vegas. There's, there's lights, there's glam, there's everything. And I can't help but notice your watch. <laughs> so tell us, oh, tell yeah. us about your watch here. Yeah, because it's uh, Let's see that. Mundi. Ora Mundi. Ora Mundi is <laughs> Our, the for the hours, <laughs> because in Italy it's very different, uh, a lot. Uh, and uh, ah, by day at, at home, and, uh, because uh, I like the watch, but it's the watch is more expensive, right? Like <laughs> Perfect. Let's get a good shot of the watch there. Okay. And there we have it. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you, Alessandro. Thank you, Angelo. Thank you very much for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. This has been a thank blast. You thank you, and best of luck to you next year. Thank you.